Hello again. Oh, quiet noise. There we go. <laughs> Hello again, and uh, thank you for joining us again for a, yet another interview. Now, this one uh, we actually recorded yesterday. So there's no video um, on it, um, but um, you will have a lovely picture of Russ down here. Of course, Russ. Who is it? Russ Nicholson. Here we are. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers, boys. And I'm delighted to introduce Russ Nicholson, who's been uh, an artist, illustrator in the fantasy world for, well, probably over 50 years now. Is that, Hello, Russ, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Oh, fantastic. Hello, I'm here. I'm you, not there. You're, we're, we're everywhere at the moment in the, in the ether. So that's us. Now, you are actually on a phone at the moment, so um, the, the line uh, might be a little bit crackly at times, but we'll, we'll persist and... Uh, hopefully, um, you know, we're able well, to get some questions. Your voice you. is sounding very good, so it, it should be all right. My only, my only problem is, is getting a warm ear. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you know, has it been 50 years, Russ? Is that correct, or has it been longer than that now? Uh, I've been doing it since 1970, just after, um, let's see now, actually, it'd be 1974, as far as fantasy art is concerned. Wow. Before that, I was doing general illustration, but that was uh, it was slow. I wasn't making a living out of it. And I'll be honest, actually, in '74 when I started, it was really um, I, I was interested in uh, fanzines, especially fantasy ones, and uh, I got involved with the British Fantasy Society and uh, sent in a couple of drawings. And they said, lovely, and can you send in some more? And sometimes I was actually doing a, a particular job, like for uh, my, uh, one of the magazines called Fantasy Tales, and other times it was just a general, um, can you supply some spots, please, Russ? Wow. And, and that was it. And from that, um, I, I think it was, um, it could have been Jamie, Jamie Thompson. Yes. But because he was involved with White Dwarf. But uh, it was Steve Jackson who actually phoned me. And uh, he said, would you be interested in doing this, um, this this book we're doing? And he explained what it was about, and I said, I would love to. And so from a, a point of view of that, that would be 1982. I'm assuming you are that, talking about the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. We're talking about the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. But you see, before that, I was doing other work for um, uh, American fan and so on. But I wasn't really getting a, a couple of them actually paid me. But Ooh. most of them were just, um, would you like to do this? And because I enjoyed doing it. Yeah. Um, but I'd also been, since 1980, um, working for, um, you know, sort of part-time sort of business, for DC Thompson. Um, and I was doing Giddles comics. Oh, right. Oh, wow. What kind of um, illustrations were they? Were they sort of the, the, the Bunty strip, style? Strip, just... They were strip illustrations. Oh, okay. I, I, I worked for two comics in particular. Um, one was Bunty, and the other was... Um, and it's just going out of my head. This is one of the problems, actually. The, this, this damn the stroke also has affected my memory. Oh. Uh, Tracy. A little magazine called Tracy. And, uh, of course, all, I used to have to do little trials, and then that's all right, and then off, off you go. And I was working on that, and even after Warlock, um, for a few years. And the only reason that I stopped with the fighting fantasy books was because, as you know, I did the first book and the second book. Yes. And uh, they said, would you like to do the third book? And I said, I would love to do the third book. And they said, great. And I asked for more money. Yeah. And um, as I thought I should be, I deserved because of the amount of time I was taking over the drawings. Yeah. And, uh, and they said, yep, that's fine, and all the rest of it. I said, but oh, by the way, because I was also t a teacher yeah. in schools. And, uh, I, was, uh, and uh, I said, uh, I've just taken up this post to teach uh, in a college in Papua New Guinea. Wow. And they basically said to me, Papua New Guinea. And I said, yes. I said, I'll, I'll send the, pool, uh, the artwork back from there. And they said to me categorically, uh, well, the person who wrote anyway, because I didn't go on, um, uh, uh, no, 
we cannot employ artwork from abroad. Now, at the same time, I was submitting, whilst I was out there, I was submitting work to D.C. Thompson. And then the whole time that I was there for three years, I only ever lost one strip. And that was because I had trusted the postman, you know, at the post office, yeah. to stick the stamps on. And of course, he just pocketed them. <gasps> right? So it never That's... was posted. I did try to trace it, but it was, it was never found. Oh. Um, but other than that, uh, it was perfectly all right. Wow. And in the interim, uh, whilst I was out there, um, I was contacted by um, uh, uh, Dave Morris. And he, he said, would you like to do a book? And I said, I would love to do a book. And I was actually coming back to London at that point. We met up at, uh, I remember now, it was a um, little cafe place at the top of Charing Cross. Um, uh, you know, they have a sort of restaurant cafe. And we had, you know, this is a sort of joke with me, actually. We had tea, we chatted, we got on well. And I went away with a, a, I'm going to do this book. He sent me the details, I sent them back the artwork. And that was a book called Way of the Tiger. Oh, yes, yes. Fantastic. Well, right. we've got uh, Jamie on there. Uh, well, no, he'd have been. So we're pre-recording this, so it'd be tomorrow morning, but earlier today. <laughs> so you're all out. Fantastic. And, and did you have like a fascination with fantasy as a child? Yes. Yes, I always have. I mean, it was uh, my my first book was uh, fantasy. The sound music. My, my mother liked music and so on. Yeah. And uh, I hadn't, I don't remember seeing Fantasia, but um, it was the, the music for the Sorcerer's Apprentice and the Night on Bear Mountain. And that just evoked stuff in me uh, when I was a boy, I was about five. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, my grandmother had um, the Red Fairy Book, you know, with the lines. Yes. And uh, in it was various drawings. There's still one that sticks in my head to this day. Like, it scared the living daylight out of it. It's where the giant is looking down through the floorboards at all the dead bodies of children. <laughs> and, uh, he's, and because that's where the hero is hiding. I think it's Jack the Giant Killer. And, uh, and that, that really did stick. So that was that, that was my sort of interest. And then any time I came across anything that was fantasy related, um, usually books, to be honest, yeah, um, and comics, of course, um, I I grabbed it. And when I found out see, in Scotland um, where I was initially, um, it was like talking to the trees because nobody else was interested. I couldn't find anybody who was interested at all. Can you remember um, the name of any of the artists that you're particularly drawn to at that age? Uh, uh, yes, um, uh, uh, Edmund Dulac. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, of course, Audrey Beardsley. Um, I didn't see much of his work, but what I saw, I loved. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think now. Actually, like, I was, Robinsons, a, I was a huge know, fan of um, Rackham. Arthur Rackham. Yes, right? oh yes, Arthur Rackham. Yeah. In fact, when I took work um, to my first agent um, down in London when I came down south, um, I actually showed him, um, if we were doing other stuff, I said, but I've got this one. And I showed it to him, and he said, You're, it, it's just poor Rackham. Oh. And that was totally dismissed. You know, and of course, I'll be honest, actually, it was like having your teeth kicked out. Yeah. And it did hurt. Um, you know, it was, he was so dismissive. Oh. Tone of voice, everything about it was, uh, uh, you know, forget about it. Wow. And uh, I did for a while, but then again, as I said, I started drawing for myself because the, my job in London uh, was the three day week. And that fell through. And that three day week is, I don't know if you remember, but in the sticks, it lasted longer than uh, one year. It lasted three. Yeah. Um, so I was working in advertising. In fact, actually, my first job actually in London was in advertising. Oh, wow. I had done illustrations, as I said, for a book with the agent, but it wasn't uh, too much. And I did a book called Theseus and the Minotaur uh, for McDonald's. 
um, which was, and they said, can you do um, Asterix? And I said, yes, because I knew who Asterix was, because there was a comic at that time, or just before, called Ranger, and yeah. they published something. And uh, I, uh, I adored it, because they were publishing um, foreign strips. Um, and I sort of got into that. Wow. And that was easy. It was, it was absolutely dead easy. But I don't know why, but something got up the nose of the, the editor. And in those days, all the editors were women. And they were all Oxbridge. And they all went from one job to another. So they all knew each other. And I was blacklisted. Oh, God. Yeah. So I changed my name. Yes. <laughs> and that's when I started getting rough again. What did you change it to? Russ. Oh, right, that was... Russell. Oh, okay, cool. Now, Russ, well, I'm going to, I'm going to um, go on to your blog so uh, yeah, everyone sure. at home can see some of your work and they can right, find you, you um, uh, on there. So I'm just going to uh, click on to that. So, okay, now I'm just going to look at your fabulous work, and it, it's so detailed. And the first one uh, we've got on there was, um, I think it's like um, Skaven, um, yes. having a, a brawl. Um, yes. Yes, uh, yes, that was for a particular um, um, job. That one was the seller. The, the original drawing, actually, was about A3. Right. I never got it back. I got some work back eventually from a uh, white um, dwarf, uh, rather, the, which was then, by then, um, Games Workshop. Yeah. But uh, um, I never got that back. I, I've, I've written about the the fight I had, the fight's not really the right word, um, but it was about the fact, actually, of doing things. And if you go down further, actually, yes. you've got the piece from Conrad. Yes? Um, I've, that, got, I've got the one where you've got, um, I think, it's a, a Chaos Knight. Um, oh, right, you've, you're looking at the, a, a different page. Oh, yeah, this was a long time ago. 27th working of February 2020. Let's have a little look at that one then. Okay, I'm going from the top down. Goodness me, there's some incredibly intricate work here, Russ. So what's your actual process? Where, how do you start? Do you start with um, sort of pencil um, line drawings and and then? I, um, I, I, originally, I started with, with the pencil and so on. Um, all the comic work I used to do um, was um, brush, right? Yes. Um, and I was perfecting a, a, a brush technique. There's a couple of pictures I've done, uh, fantasy-wise, for written brush, but usually I stick to pen. Yes. And in those days, I used uh, works ink and pen for those people who like that sort of thing. And there's a picture there anyway, actually, because it's also with a, um, it's uh, the scathing and fighting uh, in the cellar. Yes. The next one is from Conrad, and that particular picture was never published oh. because uh, that was being done. Uh, had just been done actually at the time when we, uh, when the editor, uh, sorry, the owner of Games Workshop at that time, um, said you'll never work for us again. <laughs> what yeah. happened was I was uh, um, commissioned to do um, a battle scene. Yes, and. Um, uh, at that time, I was working large. Um, somebody actually owns that picture now in America. But uh, I, I did it, and it was a double-page spread. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they wanted particular regiments. You know, the little figures they used to do. Yes, yeah. So I set a whole pile of figures, and then I was trying to draw all that, and there was a battle scene there. And it was loosely based on Altdorfer's and the Battle of Mannheim. Wow. I think it's fabulous. No, anyway, it was a very old novel. And um, uh, so everything in this kitchen sink is going on. On the left-hand side of the picture, um, it was more full figure. On yeah. the right-hand side, it was a bombing city in the distance. Yes. And the figures were down in a sort of valley, and they were literally battling each other. Wow. Um, and, uh, and they were happy with it, they said. Um, but... And the price that was going to be paid was £200. Yes. And they said, um, 
we love the picture. It's absolutely fantastic. But we only want to use the left hand side. Oh. Right? Yeah. And I said, fine, that's perfectly all right with me. And um, so um, that'll be um, £100 then. And they said, yes, that's what we'll pay you. Oh. And I said, okay, I had no problem with that. And then they said, um, but, I said, but you won't use the right hand side because you don't have any rights to it. And they said, oh no, we have the rights to the right hand side as well. Oh. And I said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, it's a long time ago, yeah. way back in the 90s. Um, and uh, I said, no, I, I can't go with that. I said, I will accept £100 for the left-hand side um, uh, and so on. And Well, it ended up, I don't think they even paid me. Um, mm. They don't think they used it. Um, and it, it went from one manager to the, uh, to the next one and so on. It was, um, oh, I'm trying to remember his name, actually. Also an artist who worked for... Um, James Workshop, mm. John Blanche, and I, I, I corresponded with John in, in the past and so on. Mostly, it was usually by letter, um, uh, because in those days people just wrote to each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> times have changed, <laughs> and uh, um, he had commissioned it, but he wasn't the one who dealt with it. Um, and so he wasn't involved with what went on. And literally, it went from this manager anyway, and I said, they said, no, 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 you, um, I'm going to have to talk to this manager. And he went and talked to somebody else, and that person phoned me and said, look, we love the piece and all the rest of it and so on, and we will pay you for the left-hand side, but we will reserve the right to, to use the right-hand side. Yeah. And I said, fine, pay me £200, it's yours. No. Oh dear. Right? Yeah. And this went on and on until eventually, I was actually at work, I was, I was working at a college in, in uh, Thanet, and uh, I, the, I was literally on my lunch hour, there was nobody else in the office, and the phone rang, and there was a, the, the person who then owned a games workshop and said, you know, love your work and all the rest of it, blah, 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 um, but we can't have this situation going on. Yeah. And I said, look, it's perfectly simple. Pay me for what you use. You don't own the right to what you don't use. Yeah. And uh, he said, no, absolutely not. He got very angry. And that's when he said, you'll never work for this again. And a couple of days later, I got my drawing back. God. Right? Yeah. And then I, uh, a few weeks after that, um, uh, two packets turned up and it was... Uh, some of my artwork, not all of it. Yeah. A lot of what is uh, 40k. Yes. And um, of course, a lot of uh, fantasy stuff as well. Um, and at least the, the first book of Conrad actually had all my illustrations in it. If you notice now, if you ever pick up a copy, yeah. you will find there's no illustrations in it at all. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, even though I was. I was perfectly happy for them to publish them because they paid for them. Yeah. Um, they, 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 they literally republished the book without my drawings. That's insane. And that particular picture I'm talking about, um, the one about Conrad, was I, I, it was on the second book. And, uh, and that was never published to my knowledge. God. And I didn't get it back, which is annoying. Just just looking at some some of your your illustrations, you either illustrate. I mean, do you, how, where do you get your, the references from? Are they do you use figures? Um, do you use sort of photographs, or is it all from your mind? Um, a, a bit of both. I mean, if you if we if we go back into the nineteen eighties, right? Getting hold of reference for anything was absolutely nigh on impossible. Yeah. So I, I relied a great deal on my um, the, the local library. Yes. Um, and um, uh, magazines, anything I could come across sort of business. And I collected a whole pile of pictures out of uh, things like uh, National Geographic yeah. and stuff like that. Um, as uh, um, time progressed, I started to um, accumulate books 
on costume, you know, oh, anything yes. at all. Uh, and I have an awful lot of books, and I still have a lot of books, even though I, I sold a lot of them off. But uh, um, and I was I was literally buying anything which caught my eye, caught my interest. If it was a um, what they now call graphic novels, it would mm. have been a graphic novel. Yeah. But I've never. I, I had a, a, a policy when I was at college. Don't copy. Yeah. And actually, now I would say to anybody, <laughs> copy, <laughs> because <laughs> you can learn a lot from copying other people's work. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had the joke. I remember where um, I had one of the students at college, and he said, "I really am." really happy with you, Russ. And I, and I said, why? Um, we haven't really done anything. And he said, no. He said, um, my own level, um, I, I got a high grade on my own level um, by copying your work. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. Yeah. And I liked it, yeah. Well, that's um, I mean, has your process changed dramatically from... You know, in, in the last few years, since the, the age of internet and just your... Um, I'm, I'm using more, I do use the internet more. I mean, the internet is a godsend when it comes to um, reference. Yeah. You know, so many people publish stuff. I mean, first of all, when it's first started, I mean, from the point of view of, of um, people, everybody forgets it was 1994 that it really kicked off. Hmm. You know, it existed before, but it was 1994, and I know that because of... Um, what I was doing at college. Um, and uh, even then, it was minimal, and most people didn't know how to handle things. There was a couple of people in the um, a, a computer department who yeah. helped me how to you know, look at stuff and download stuff and all the rest of it. Um, and then, of course, it, it opened up more, and I think that was about probably about four years later, about 98. And so it's really been in the last 20 years, you know, since the, the century began, that it's really opened up. And now I think of something, I've got books, and I actually look at it and think, do I need to keep this book? Why? Um, because it's a big, hard book. I don't have space. We had to downsize because of our, our walking. My wife also has problems. And uh, it's on the internet. So if I need something, I can download it look at it and then use that as reference and are you um are, are you busy at the moment you're working on many projects or yeah um at the moment actually you caught me i was working uh, doing uh, some work for um the steam highwayman um uh, and it's the the london one and of course of course out of brain it's i forgot the title um but that's with martin nooch oh brilliant and I'm also doing, I've just had an email um, from, uh, where is it now actually, for some reason she sent it to me, the, uh, my other one. I'm doing, yes, I'm doing a work for um, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Oh, fantastic. Um, it's basically playing cards. And it's for Wizards of the Coast. Oh, fantastic. And do you yeah, get time to draw and, for yourself for pleasure? <laughs> well, these are they're dead easy as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I have monsters. I mean, I, I, I had monsters climbing out of my brain since I was a boy. <laughs> so so it's, it's not actually hard. What I do like to do, and um, this is something I'm, I'm proud of. One person said to me, this is about my comic work. But he said, you're one of the few people who, although you're working in black and white, is in color. Yeah. And the, and, and the second one is that the, uh, people said, um, you know, how, how do you do it? And I said, I, I can't give you an, an honest answer, except this is what I want to do. I enjoy drawing. And as long as I can, I will. Yeah. If I get paid for it, that's a, that's a big plus. When you're, you know? you're coming up with a composition... Do you, um, before you start, do you really have a very good idea in your mind's eye on how I, it's yeah, going to look like? Before I, you... I, I, what I like to do, and I've told people who whenever they commission me, is I like what I call thinking time. And it's basically what is wanted 
and then I put it to the back of my mind. I'm in bed, maybe sleeping, but it's going through my head. And when I wake up in the morning, I've got a concept of what I want to do. Yes. I then sit down and then start to sketch out um, the compositional structure of the picture. Yeah. Um, and then I tighten that up, um, and then I would ink. And um, I, uh, that was basically it. Um, now I use um, I use Photoshop. You just heard me t uh, talking about yeah. that. And as I said, I'm working on um, uh, Martin Nucci's uh, 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 book. And as I said, the, the lady from uh, Wizards of the Coast has just okayed me on two drawings which I'm doing for them. I mean, it's not a lot, but uh, it, it, it keeps me hand in, as I say. Yeah. How, does that, uh, how long does it take you to do like one finished piece, like one of your failures of um, like a, a book uh, illustration? It, 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 it varies. I mean, sometimes you can deadhead. I mean, completely. I've yeah. actually, uh, in the past, I mean, for example, you were talking about Jamie and you were talking about his uh, um, evil little wizard, you know, the, the kid. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Well, he originally sent that script to me. And he wanted me to do something. And I just couldn't get it. Yeah. Because to me, the, the original monster creature was so graphic in my mind that to draw him for a child's book was, ah, ah you know. Um, and uh, so I actually said to Jamie, reluctantly, I have to turn it down. Because we had been working on the um, Fable of Land. Um, for several years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, also and I also, um, I mean, I've, I've got another one, which is um, um, with a, a group called, he, he calls himself, I won't go, I'm not going into, to into details, I'm sorry, because he's never published it. Yeah. But for 10 years, I have been working on a project for a company called Calypic in uh, America. And uh, it's basically originally going to be um, four different books, right? Yeah. But again, and he was play testing and all the rest of it. And he actually, we, we chatted a, an email um, about a month ago. And I said, so what's happening? And he said, um, he, said I, he said, I bit off more than I could chew. He said this was a lot more difficult, and even though he's actually one of the, um, he works for Windows. You know, he's one of those top um, graphic people, yeah. not graphic, say computer people. And um, but he loved my work, and he contacted me, and so um, over ten years, not every day, we've been working on this project, um, and he said it's now going to be one book. Oh. And that's as far as it's got at the moment. With a lot of illustrations, <laughs> I hope. A lot of illustrations. <laughs> yeah. And each of the books actually had four colour covers. Wow. Good right. Lord. Um, and it, it, it basically, it, he, he ran the gambit. Um, he was doing it, this idea of, of, of different worlds. And in fact, if you look, I used to use um, uh, a picture which was with uh, these sort of, sort of dinosaur birds flying over a, um, a cliff area with the sun in the distance. Yes. And that was one of the drawings I did for that. Um, you know, it, it was a colour spot. I, um, I've got, I've got, um, I've got one more question for you, and it's actually from uh, James Kale. Um, yeah. And he he asks um, if there's a subject that you haven't been asked to draw yet for commission that you'd love you know like a, a dream job um you know if, like if someone asked you to do a certain series or um you know fantasy novel or something like that have you have you thought oh, about I, that or that's a difficult one i've got a, 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 a book in my head i did a um uh the um, i did a uh First of all, it was an essay for one book. Mm. And then there was a, um, there was a, um, oh, you know, my dreadful, my, my memory. Um, it, it was about maps. And of course, I'm nuts about maps. Yeah. I always have been. And uh, he asked me to do a fantasy map. And I came up with this place called Galicia. 
and uh, it, it literally um, dwarfs goblins and humans, which is your, 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 your typical thing. And I've had a goblin book running in my head, uh, but it's for a child for t- easily 10 years myself. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, you know, it's a sort of spoof thing. And I'm not going to go into any details because somebody will go away and write it. Yeah, yeah. And Dave, Dave Morris used to say, I was a, put a, 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 a try out to a particular place, next thing I knew, somebody else is publishing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, Dave was always getting ripped off. Oh. Um, Jamie less so, because I think um, he's more savvy when it comes to people. He just goes up and hits them. Yeah. And that's a joke, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really I, I know Jamie very well. I know Dave very well. We haven't say, met, met up or spoken in years. Yeah. But by the time of the last, the, the sixth book in the Fable of Land, we were actually, um, they were very kindly coming down and uh, saying, um, let's have a coffee and talk about what we're doing. Wow. You know? Um, but it is that sort of situation. Yeah. Sorry, so I can't really think of anything as such. I no. Mean, what about honest, Lord of the Rings I or love, Sorry? Lord of the Rings or maybe something like um Alice in Wonderland doing your own spin on that or Well I I, I did once have a go at trying out to uh, Gormengas. Ooh. Oh. I, I would be absolutely brilliant at that. Oh Gormengas would be wonderful. Oh yes. Yeah. And uh, I tried out some sketches at the time. This is the way back, um, and uh, I just found I could visualize it, yeah. but I couldn't draw it. Do you think that you could means- now? Do you think your skill? I mean, obviously, you've had the skill since a very young age. But do you think you've got a lot better, or, or worse, maybe in the last, you know, t- ten, so fifteen years I'll, or so? I'll be, I'll, I'll be truthful and say that. Um, the stroke affected me. I mean, I'm left-handed. Yeah. And I, I, it was what's called a left-handed stroke, sided stroke. And uh, when the um, paramedics c- came out, because my wife phoned it, uh, because it just had literally collapsed, yeah. um, they, they, they looked at me and checked me out, and I was talking, and I was talking, and I seemed to be uh, pretty well all right, except I couldn't stand up. And they eventually got me on my feet um, and thought, well, that's it. And off they went. But, of course, the following night I collapsed again and then I collapsed again. And yeah. it was all the same stroke. You know, it's yeah. not, uh, it wasn't different strokes. It was the same one. But it wasn't bits. <laughs> Typically me. Yeah. Um, and I lost complete use of um, my left side, including wow. my hand. God. And of course, being left-handed, I had to teach myself how to write again and how to draw again. And as as my wife said, because I was furious, wouldn't give up. And she said, uh, every day I was doing something until my hand came back better and better. Wow. But it has changed. It's not as um, I suppose I, in some ways I'm not as confident about it as I used to be. However. That doesn't mean that I don't put my best into any drawing or work. Of well, I, you know, you, you wouldn't know. You know. Your work is still extraordinary, you know, and just beautiful and imaginative. And, you know, to, I, mean, it, it's, I think it certainly drew me into uh, uh, fancy um, game books at, at an age because it, you know, it's, uh, it was so detailed. And I just, I just yeah. love, love well, it. Well, I mean, uh, thank you. I mean, I'll be honest, actually. I mean, that business about not... Um, being employed by um, this was purely Puffin, by the way, Puffin Books. It, it wasn't anything to do with Steve um, or Ian mm. um, about me not doing any more books. And uh, when I came back from Puffin New Guinea, uh, one of the first things I did, I, uh, besides getting back into comic artwork, um, was because I was still ongoing. Um, I contacted uh, uh, Puffin the fighting fantasy and I said is there any chance that you would like to employ me again mm. and the lady concerned literally I mean she just wrote to me but it was very effusive and said yes and we'll give you a book and I was off again 
Yeah. And this time, the rate was a lot better. Good. <laughs> that, that's one of the, the, the jokes. That the, um, what people were getting paid from book three on, right, yeah. was at least twice what I was asking for. Ugh. And by the time I came back, it was three times what I was asking for. Yes. When I made um, a, a living out of, uh, for example, Warlock, right, was in world rights. Yeah. Because one of the things that Puffin were excellent at was, um, unlike a lot of people who maybe only give you 2% or 5% of uh, any project they're doing, yeah. um, Puffin gave you 75 Wow. Yes, exactly. Wow. That's great. And, that, and uh, on Warlock, with his uh, reprinting in the first year, I made five times what I've been paid. Just from that 75% uh, uh, royalty right. Yeah. And Cotton at the same time would not pay you if it was published in English. Uh, for example, uh, anywhere where they had a, a, um, a, a business place or whatever you would want to call it. So America, for example, um, I didn't get anything. Uh, oh, Bank Park, yes, I did. And then they stopped it. Um, but Canada, Australia, New Zealand, no way. Nothing. Wow. Um, because that's, that's how they, they deal with things. That's why these days, with my drawing, um, if somebody wants to buy the rights, I would just say, well, stick another couple of quid on. Yeah. Or um, whatever. With the uh, Martin, um, we have a set price. They've actually offered me half of the price right now, but I'm, I'm more than halfway through the book. Yeah. For what we need to do. Um, and uh, I've just got to, to do it. But I'm dreadful at writing invoices. <laughs> I really <laughs> am. You know, it's like my tax. I still haven't done my tax yeah. yet. Oh, no. You oh, know? no. Um, and I'm thinking, oh, God. Every year I say to myself, I'm not going to get in this mess. It yeah. won't happen. And every year it does. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Anyway, Russ, thank you so much for your time today. Um, you know, we will look forward to seeing what's uh, coming up in the future for you and uh, you know, all your work and the and the projects you're on. And uh, we appreciate and, and love you in the, from the community. And um, thank you so well, much again for for joining yeah, us. Thank you very much. Are you sure? That, I mean, I don't think I think I just rabbited a bit. That's my Rabbiting opinion. is perfect. <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, yes, I am really busy at the moment. That's good. Um, because, yeah, because I'm also doing it, we'll all throw this in very quickly. Yes. Right? Um, for Martin Gooch, you know, the filmmaker? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Well, Martin and I are a friend, and I've been working on, and he's been beautiful, he's been so kind. Um, uh, a children's book for him, and I've been doing the illustrations. Oh, it's fantastic. Barnaby and the Barbalong. Barnaby and the Bar Barbaron. Is Barbalong, it? yes. Barbalong, that. Fantastic. Yes, and uh, um, he's just, he's, he's, I literally thought I'd finished it, and then he said, oh, could you do a back page? And I haven't done it yet. Yeah. And then I thought, there, there was a couple of uh, the other pictures where I thought, actually, as I've got the time, I can do a couple of little tweaks. And, uh, of course, it's in my head. It's, I've sketched it out on the, uh, the originals. Yes. But I haven't done it. Oh, do you, is that coming um, out next year? Do you know? Or? Yeah, I'm hoping so. I'm right. hoping so. You know, obviously you'd have to uh, you'd have to talk to Martin about it. Yeah. But I think if I can get, I'm trying to get it done certainly by the end of September. Oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, and uh, I've got another couple of things coming up. Um, and as I said, most people now, I'm saying to them, um, please, I can't take on anything. Um, well, it will have to be uh, next year. Yeah. Right, and uh, it's also annoying about um, this whole business about COVID and all the rest of it. I mean, I've been, because I haven't really been out of the house actually in three yeah. years, to be honest. Because uh, I can't, it, we, we live in a small slope of a hill. Yeah. And it's enough so that <laughs> I get to the top of the hill uh. and I'm tired. And just, uh, that's it, my legs are gone. Oh, no. And I have to turn around and go back. Um, but that, that, that's by the by. The by. Yeah. But uh, there's a um, very good um, mart, um, a convention, called Trolls and Legends. Right. right? 
Yeah. Um, which is run in um, Belgium. And uh, uh, I've just been contacted by Olivier, who, who runs it, and he said they were, were, were going to try and get it back off the ground again next um, Easter. Brilliant. I think it's Easter. He hasn't given me complete detail. And he said, would you like to be a guest? Fantastic. I've uh, been a guest before in the past. And um, I said, yes, delighted, because it is nice to have um, so many uh, people coming up. Although, mind you, the fight is fantasy one the last time. Um, I don't know if you saw the number of people who wanted me to sign books. Yes, I did. You had, you had an incredibly long queue, I think. Uh... Uh, yes. Do you know I was at it for three hours? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it was a I busy day. I had to start to go. And uh, the, the, the young lady who was with me, who was uh, helping out, she actually was fighting people off. Yeah. And saying things like, he hasn't eaten yet. I know. Well, you know, you know I do a lot of work with like, Tom I Baker. Yeah. Well, I've never got a chance to get together until we, I saw you packing up at the end. Yeah. No, it, it, it's yeah, it, it, it's for hard work signing stuff for people. Right? Yeah. Anyway, I mean, Ross, I'm going to let you go because um, yep, we've got the next interview yep. coming out soon. So thank you again for your time and uh, and, and look after yourself and we look forward to meeting maybe at uh, the next Fighting Fantasy Festival when, when that ever happens. Or maybe yeah. be on live, maybe next year.